All right, everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Shane Nyquist, and I'm building an electric motorcycle from scratch. I spent about three to four months learning how to cast so I can make my own triple trees. And here, though, they look beautiful. And so in the next steps here in this video, we're going to be going through what I want, what this bike's going to be. And the first step is machining the triple trees. So here I'm using the Bridgeport mill to put in some pinch pockets, uh, machine out the steering stem pocket, and get everything kind of just ready to be actually a functional part. Straight from the casting, they don't really do much except for look pretty. So we need to put a couple bolts in there, we need them to be strong, and we need to do all the things we need to do. I actually sent these out to Oakland to get tempered with a T6 temper. They are an A356 material and apparently it was too hot so i wasn't wearing a shirt it's kind of a weird setup but i do have a beanie on so is it cold all right i don't know whatever and you can see here i'm actually adding a clamp to keep the ringing down because this part was just screaming um with that much stick out so it helps kind of keep the eardrums alive And once again with the awesome outfit here, I guess it was nighttime because I was in my sleepy time sweats um, basically in the middle of the night probably thinking how I had to do this. Got up to do it and probably stayed up till around 3 o'clock in the morning. But hey, we got it done, we got it drilled, and it looks fantastic. You can see I'm taking it out of the fixture and for the last time I'm just probably going to tap those by hand because I'm really scared. Oh, some uh, Birkenstocks, that's cool. It's a cool outfit, whatever. Yeah, I wanted to tap this one by hand, just so I didn't have any mistakes. And the last thing I want to do is snap a tap off deep inside there and have to start over from scratch. So with the Triple G's all machined up, I, I put them on the fork legs just to try them out. Everything pinches up, which is awesome. Everything works out great. Um, I'm super stoked on this whole project, so please go back and watch the video. Um, the reason for these forks is because I'm running Harley wheels and they need a little bit more clearance than the normal R6. Well, here's a fun fact. UCSC uses the Bendis Snug as their mascot and it likes to eat fruits that are the same color as it. And this thing is absolutely frightening. Look at it. Thank God they don't get big. This is like nightmare fuel. I'm using a Motenergy 1803 motor, puts out about 70 kilowatts, and I'm pairing that up with a Kelly controller that puts out about 600 amps. The battery is going to be a 120 volt, 6 kilowatt hour NMC style battery. Um, I have some previous parts which I've assembled this from. It's liquid cooled, which is great, so I should be able to put out the power that I need. And here you can see I've done some CAD, and I'm just going to bend up some tubes using the JD Square Bender and an awesome 1990s biker mustache goatee combo. This is a one inch diameter 095 electric welded tubing and I didn't save you some time here just putting everything up in this jig. I actually made a video for this jig. You should go back and check out that one. Everything's looking really nice. The cat actually helped out to make all the clearances right, make sure all the parts could still fit. I didn't quite know how I was going to mount everything inside of this, so it's kind of like a build it and then figure out what you're doing afterwards kind of thing. So I left a decent amount of space for the charger, the controller, the motor. I knew I wanted the battery up in the front, but not really what position I was going to put it in. So I wanted to build it and start playing with it in person to see how it looked and felt. And you can see here, everything's really going really well with this jig. I'm super happy with it. So I called Dustin over to help me kind of play with this stuff. And he came up with some really good ideas, which I'm going to steal and basically claim for my own. So thanks, Dustin. And here we've got a Royal Enfield yeah. gas tank. Now, I know you don't put gas in an electric vehicle, but the look of a gas tank on there really helps. And I'm kind of thinking of using this for an electronics cover or maybe where the charger would sit or maybe a retractable extension cord, which would be rad, like a vacuum so you could just plug it in wherever you go. But I had to cut up this beautiful tank that I got off eBay. Like and we're going to see what we can do with it. You let me know down in the comments. Do you think I should run... A gas tank or should I do like a Tron bike, you know, with no gas tank, electric weirdness, you know, 
one thing about electric bikes is they always try to make them look futuristic. And, you know, for good sense, but... So after we kind of figured out what we're doing, I had to really get the, the wheels on it. I had the front forks, but I had not done the swing arm yet. So right here, I'm machining down or lathing down a rod to use as a swing arm pivot bolt. And I got to get that right to exactly 25 millimeters um, on the dot minus maybe two thou max. It goes into these needle bearing setups. So I'm using the micrometer to check. I've let the part cool down. I did a really good job with this and I'm using this micrometer I think that's what it's called, like a pro. Like I'm a pro machinist, that's how I feel after I get this thing right and it just slides in there. So you can see we actually machined up some Delrin bushings and some aluminum spacers and it fit nicely, fit really nice. I left a little bit of clearance on the frame for the powder coat, but um, you can pinch it down and it's got really good, no slop back and forth. So here's kind of an overall look of how we wanted to do the electronics. I decided to do kind of a backbone style, like main plate that goes on the back and the charger and the controller sit on it while the motor is constrained below it by two separate plates. You can see the battery is held in place by kind of a angle iron on the bottom and then a bunch of tabs on top. And I'm just trying to figure out what my spacing is on the wheel here. So it looks beautiful. And I finally got a chance to get the frame off the jig. So I put the front forks on, trying to also figure out what spacers I need for the front wheel, how it's going to look. I haven't figured out a headlight combo. Um, I'm thinking something traditional or maybe something wild. I got these little lights off of Amazon. Please let me know down in the comments what you think. I could go with the all traditional cafe racer, like big round headlight. Or I could do something a little bit different like LEDs and, you know, I still haven't thought about it. Let me know. Here we got a 12 tooth sprocket um, and a 66 tooth sprocket in the back. I'm trying to get my gear reduction really high because this motor spins up like crazy. So I've made a little, I got a little collar on Master Car and I'm machining it down to fit on there. And after I got that in place, I've put the wheel on there and I've lined up all the stuff. Um, and I'm trying to see um, how to get the wheel in the center with the shocks in place, how to line up the pivot points between the swing arm, the wheel, and the sprocket so that I don't get squat under acceleration. Uh, well, lots going on here, and you know I don't film that much, but you get the point, right? Maybe? You can see here I'm in the ballpark of the uh, chain alignment, um, so I could probably shim out that front sprocket just to get it nice and tight. So after I figured it was close, we tigged it all up, and I left it out in the rain for about four weeks, and yeah. Now we got a roller. It's looking great. It's super long on that flat section seat. I'm going to call it the three seater because uh, we'll put the whole family on it and go to lunch or something. But I really like it. I posted some pictures on Instagram. Everyone gave me some really good feedback. So we're going to move forward. You can see here the massive pipe plate sprocket, the nice Harley shocks. Um, this is the charger side with the motor. I mean, everything's coming to be real nice. And just a few little things to wrap up. Here's the rear brake caliper that I'm running. It was filthy. It was on a shelf forever. So I had to sand down the little pistons and put it all in a cleaner and try and get all the junk out. And then something horrible happened. I learned that my kid can climb. And it's like, you got to watch this kid 24-7 now because he'll do the wildest things. And, you know, while she sleeps, I actually get some time to do some CAD. So I stole this foot peg design from Dustin again. And I put my own logo on it, and I'm going to use it for my own. I'm going to steal it, claim it for my own, call myself the best designer slash maker in the world. So, thanks, Dustin. I'm using the CR10 to make some uh, top and bottom molds. And I'm going to use my foundry, which you can see the video for, to pour these. And I did the most minimal amount of prep on these as possible. I wanted to see if I could just come straight off the printer, scrape it with a wire brush, bury it in sand. And I want to see how it would come out, because I'm lazy. So... Um, this is once again an A356 aluminum, and look at that. Cool. Like, that's crazy. This is the pinnacle of laziness, and it's it's beautiful. I mean, it needs some cleanup, like everything coming out of the sand, but super stoked on it. So the next step was basically get a little holder for these guys. They are probably pretty soft from being cast. So I'm trying to put in a little stopper there so they don't sag down while I'm, you know, stomping on these things or standing up trying to look through traffic. They usually sag about a 
quarter inch. So at some point I might put a set screw in the back and, you know, make a, a little adjuster. But for now they look great. And one of the last steps I'm doing here is I'm just tacking this baby up on the frame. I'm going to sit on it, see how it feels, see how I like the position. And now that everything's in place, I'm going to burn everything in. Now I'm using the MIG welder instead of the TIG. And, you know, some people would say that's bad. But, I mean, for the most part, I'm going to put a big fat weld on it. And a TIG welder would be absolutely impossible to get all these small places it, i'd have to like squeeze up and down inside of there so i'm just going to burn the midnight oil i spent about an hour straight just moving back and forth on the frame making sure i didn't get any hot spots to keep the warping down because when you put too much heat in these things the, the, it actually warps a lot and i don't have it very constrained on this jig i'm just kind of using it as a, a holder but other than that i mean the bike turned out great the frame turned out great super excited about it you can see we got some MIG welds. I'll probably just buff those out and bury them in powder coat and they'll look great. Can I more? And I'm trying to teach my daughter some new tricks. How to feed me like a king. And we're still working on it. Yeah. Hey, don't steal that. One of the last things I want to do here is I want to make a seat and for that nice three-seater. So I'm just taking some aluminum. And uh, this will be an upcoming video. I'm going to cover all that in some beautiful leather. I have not figured out a design yet, so if you have any suggestions, please let me know. I found a random puck of aluminum, and I'm bending that to the ID of the back kickup, which is about three inches. Just kind of shove it in the vise and yank on it, cleaning up all the pieces, getting it ready for leather. That's good enough for you. Man, we got some wiring, some phase wires, some battery wires. A bunch of stuff left to do on this bike, but it's got a kickstand. It's sitting on its own, and I think it looks super rad. As far as electric bikes go, I wanted to go with that big, beefy, fat boy cafe racer style. It's a little bit tall. It's a little bit heavy. It's not going to be a performance bike. Um, it should get a maybe 50 miles range. But we're going for like six months and just filming here and there. So if you guys like this video, please hit the like button. I'm like super burnt out on filming. It actually slows me down. So if you guys want to see more videos, make sure you subscribe, hit the like button. Let me know what you think. Any sort of suggestions, more than welcome. Thank you guys for watching.